enjoyed to the nations. It's wonderful to be in your home this morning or this afternoon or evening, whenever you are going to be watching this recording. My service, this sermon this morning is called, What is Jesus Calling You to Do in This Season? Yeah, we find ourselves in a very, very strange season, difficult season, challenging season, exciting season, uh, a season full of uh, new stuff, uh, something we've never really been faced with, ever. And uh, so I'm going to share with you, that's really my heart. And uh, and so, yeah, what is Jesus calling us to do in this season? What What is he want us to do? You know, right in the beginning of the lockdown, God laid it in my heart, um, sort of with me first, that he's given me specific talents and gifts for this season, specifically this season. And he wants me to use it to do what? To bless others, to encourage others, to walk with others. And so I quickly realized that there's work to be done. And my, 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 my feeling has not changed. I really believe in this season, joy to nations, that God's giving you a gift and a talent to bless others. He wants you to be his hand and feet, even more so than before the lockdown, before the pandemic. So what's actually happened is that um, during this lockdown, I watched a lot of people, what they did, what they did, what they, how they moved and, and how they got encouraged. And he said, uh, I remember the one day I was speaking to a very good friend of mine and she said, ah, what frustrates her during this lockdown time, he said, that she feels she's, there's nothing she's really doing for God needs it. And then she shared with me that how God did lay it on her heart that she still must pay a person that's not working for them anymore or providing a service because she can afford it and she kept on working it. Amazing thing that I said to her, you know, a week before you've had, we've had this conversation, that same person told me how parents are honoring him, still paying for service that he can't give because of the lockdown. And I said to her, well, there we go, Claire. God is using your gift and talent in this season to bless others. And then a friend of mine is a uh, owner of one of the spas, and he told me that he also feels frustrated and it's difficult and, it's, and there's fears and anxiousness. But he also shared with me how they're trying to help certain com communities by giving food parcels at cost price and, and helping them. And I was just very encouraged when I heard that. It's just just amazing. Another person uh, on my staff just one day felt that he had to go give one of the staff members some flowers to encourage her. That was a magnificent story. Um, a person that started a prayer group, how does prayer group work at every hour? There was someone going to pray. And so your slot started at 6 o'clock in the evening and then 7 and then 8. And then you went into the early mornings and he said, this person started a magnificent prayer group. I heard about an Oba and Opa praying for their, for their son uh, that got, got the virus. And then his whole family got and they stood in the gap for, for them. And so I've seen people moving, being alive for God in this time. He said. And so I want us to look at two scriptures that I think could maybe help us, encourage us, and also see how much God wants to use us. So let's turn together. The first scripture is from Matthew 25, verse 14 to 18. It's called the parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one talent each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went out once and put his money to work and gained five more talents. So also the one who with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Let's stop there. Just that introduction. Three people been given, I love it what it says, Entrusted with his wealth, his master's wealth. God has entrusted us with his wealth, his possessions, his property. That's the first thing that stands out for me. The next thing that stands out, each of them were given a talent. You, know, you see, it doesn't say so one five talents, one two talents, one, ta one talent and one no talent. No, every person in the story has been given his talent. And so I believe completely and utterly that God has given each of us Great talents, great, great talents. 
Another thing about the what stood to me, it says, uh, each according to his ability. God's not going to give us more than we can handle. He knows exactly what by his strength and power that we can handle to bless others. I quickly used to research, what, how much was a talent? A talent was, I'm going to read it to you, about 20 years of a day's labor's wage. So if you, that labor, work for uh, 200 years, uh, 200 days in a year, times over 20 years, that is what it was uh, worth. And so it was worth quite a lot, that talent that God had given these people. But this really, 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 really excites me. God is giving us talents to be his hand and feet, to make use of that talent he's given us. To do what with? To bless others. To encourage others. To walk with us. To pray with others. We've all been given a talent in this season to make a huge difference. You may be sitting there and say, yeah, but yeah, I'm not very... No. No, no. He's given you a talent. He wants you to use it. The next day, scripture I want to look at us to look at is Romans 12, 48. Romans 12, 48. It says, humble service in the body of Christ. The topic. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other or the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Again, do you see that all of us have been given gifts? And this list is not just the, the end, be all, end all. There we can add many more of the gifts that God's given us. But each person has been given a gift. And I've seen these gifts change in seasons. So as you're sitting there, yes, yes, you and me and Brendan and the, 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 the elders, the deacons, the person sitting in the back, the person sitting in front, all of you guys and ladies have been given talents and gifts for this season. I love it that God says to all has been given gifts. We've all got gifts. So I want to encourage you this morning. As God speaks to these, back to these scriptures, your talents, what is God giving you? What gifts has he given you? What can you do with them? Now, I've been observing some of our people, our fellowship group, and some people in the church, and I, I, I'm just, I've just written a couple of names of, of what I've seen, of each person having a different talent. So I'm going to go through, yes, it's mainly my, my fellowship group, but it's a group that I, I, I grow with, that I, I do most with, I get encouraged with. They're such a magnificent group to be part of. So Duncan, Duncan's got such a beautiful, solid foundation in God's Word, and he's used that in his his, his, uh, his artwork, he's used it in his little uh, website that he's got where he's on, doing online teaching. And everywhere he goes, he's so solid in God's word. He's using that talent, that gift, actually real gift of a, of a great knowledge of God's word. His wife, Natalie, has got such a gentle, beautiful spirit of great encouragement. And I see her using that. And often she will encourage me as well. It's beautiful to see. I think of Trisha. Trisha has suddenly developed this great urgency and, 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 and um, encouragement to pray for the hospitals. And so being to Livingston, to St. George's, to Mercantile, um, to Livingston, I, I've said it already, um, to St. George's, where she has met with other people and they're praying for the doctors and nurses, for the cleaning staff, for everyone involved. And they need it. And so that's beautiful to see. Her husband, John, he is such a generous man. I've seen him, his generosity reach out in this time. I think of Bano, a big Bano. He's got such a desire to serve God in his workplace. And I see how God's using him in his workplace. His wife, Nicole, 
how she's growing her mother instincts with their new uh, son, Samuel, how God's growing it, and how she's using it to bless her son. And we don't always have to do great things. It can be small, but with great significance. I think of Hannes, who's got a beautiful, simple, strong faith, how he encourages others, how he helps his wife, Jackie. Jackie had the determination to honor the people in her school, to honor her kids at school. She's very determined to honor and to create an environment of safety and concern for her students. Beautiful to see. Ozzy, the other night, he shared with us about fears and anxiousness, and he just said, I give it all on to the Lord. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to give it to the God, and I, He is going to help me through this time. He's got the answers. It's so beautiful to see. Encourage the whole fellowship group. Bruce, Bruce, you've got such a beautiful concern for others. I see the way God's using you, how God's using you and Nausea as a couple to encourage, to just, just speak to people. That's beautiful to see. Dorcas, ah, your great heart for the community. Beautiful to see. Grant, Mr. Abbott, God's placed you in a position, in a high position, to encourage people that don't even go to church. I've heard you speak about it. It's wonderful to see a talent and a gift that God's given you. Carl and Estelle, what you two have done at your school and reaching out to those people that just need it. Uh, it's just beautiful to see. Dust, uh, you are a strong physical man, but I see you have a great physical strength, a mental strength. And I really believe that God's going to use that. That's a great talent to encourage others. And so there are, other, there are more people on this list that I haven't even mentioned. But I see that God's using your gifts and talents to do what? To bless others, to encourage others, to pray for others, to be there, stand in the gap for them. Wonderful to see. So the other day when I was walking on the golf course, I must say during this time when people couldn't play golf, I often walked in the fairway and I think it's the most I've ever been on the fairway, usually as a golfer, which I'm not really a great golfer. Gary, Gary Packing can relate to this. He's in the middle of the fairway, but I spend lots of time on the outside. So I was walking the golf course in the middle of the fairways. Most I've ever spent time in the fairways. In any case, walking the golf course and there Jeremy comes to, to, to me. And the second thing after greeting me, he says, what an exciting time. People are so open to God's word. Well, God wants you to use your talents and gifts to go tell other peoples, to increase their hope, to increase their faith, to encourage them, but also to tell people about Jesus, the hope in this time of turmoil. I love this scripture in John 4, verse 34. John 4, verse 4, verse 34. Jesus said to him, my food is to do the will, pleasure. He's, he's ready to give some great pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. Hear what, what Jesus is saying. It's his food, his nourishment to do. And he gives him great pleasure to do what God sent him to, to this earth to do. Oh, that's such a beautiful statement. Joy to nations. I've seen it. I've seen it in this time. And I, I wanted to put the focus on Jesus, that he will provide and that he's given you talents and he's given you gifts. But I want to tell you what God's done in my life in this lockdown. You know, there's been times of great sorrow and, and I felt overwhelmed. But you know what the amazing thing is? And in the time I felt overwhelmed, God has used me so, so beautifully to do what? To encourage people. And you know, every time I encourage people, I start feeling lifted up, encouraged myself. I gain courage. Tell people about their worth. Tell people that love, God loves them. Tell people that God is the hope. He's our ever father. And so by using what I believe that God's laid in my heart to encourage people, to serve people, by using that, that gift and talent that God's given me, I got so immensely encouraged. I actually think that the times I've sent messages to people or phoned them to encourage them, I got more encouraged. I got more encouraged. It's been so magnificent. And I can relate to what Jesus said. That it's my food. I felt encouraged, strengthened after I've done those things. Joy to nations. 
whether you're weak, whether you're strong, whether you feel well, is well with your soul, whether you feel down, God can use you, really, really use you in the season. I really believe that God wants to do great things for you. To finish off, I think of that beautiful story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And two verses really stick out to me. So I'm going to read them to you. It's out of Matthew 14, 16 to 17. Matthew 14, 16 to 17. Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. The disciples wanted to send them away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered. So the disciples wanted to send them away. Perhaps you want to send those people away. Perhaps you want to say to God, I'm just not coping. I don't have work. I don't have finances. I just don't know what to do. Go away. I don't, I don't need these people around. And Jesus says to us, you feed them. You encourage them. You do that phone call. Why? I want you to be my hand and feet. I've given you talents. I've given you gifts to bless others. And then the disciples answer, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Come on, man. Five loaves and two fish. Where is that going to go to feed 5,000 people? You think, oh, no ways. Perhaps you're sitting here this morning saying, my gifts and talents just are not good enough. I just don't have anything. Well, five loaves and two fish in Jesus' hands. Your talents and gifts in Jesus' hands can make a huge difference. It can feed 5,000 people. It can encourage a nation. It can encourage your household. It can encourage your friend. It can make a difference. And what happens? People get fed, not just with food, but get fed with encouragement, get fed with God's word, get fed with Jesus Christ, our all-sufficient Savior. That is so exciting that in this season, Jesus is calling us to use what he's given us. And you know what? There are people on this list that have phoned me. People on this list that have sent me a message. And wow, it has really put a step back into my life. It's brought me back to God's word. I remember the one day in this time of prayer, I went before the Lord and I had nothing. I just felt just weak. I started listening to some worship songs. Slowly but surely, God just encouraged me. And then I got a text message from someone later that day. And it just really, really spoke to my spirit. Joy to the nations. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the hardships that are going to face be facing us. I don't know what you've got in your cupboard. I don't know what finances you've got. But I do believe that God doesn't want us to shrink back. God doesn't want us to say, I've got nothing to give. God wants us to use the talents he's given us. And we see the three people were all given talents. He wants us to give, use our gifts. Everyone has a gift in this season to tell the world about this great hope, Jesus Christ, all-sufficient Savior. Why? Because as Jeremy said, the world is ready for our prayers, for Jesus. The world is ready to hear about Jesus. Go out there. Go out there. And take God with you. <clears throat> take the gifts and talents He's given you. It's been great to, uh, to share with you this morning. Great just to, to hopefully, hopefully encourage you a little bit. But you know what? God is our eternal encouragement. Jesus has done it on the cross. Spend time with Him. Spend time in the morning. Spend time on your knees. I've so enjoyed this time to put a pillow down and fall on my knees and say, Lord, I surrender. The little bit of strength I have, I give it completely to you. I'm completely weak. May you strengthen me. And Abba Father has come through every time. God bless joy to nations. I pray that this week coming will be a great week where you go and use your gifts and talents to bring our Heavenly Father, Abba Father, great honor 
and to tell people about Jesus. God bless.